Right? So based on that, if you have that understanding of Mutawafika, you're going to say that this verse indicates that um, Jesus is now dead, right? And God has taken his soul to, in order to save him from the, the, the crucifixion of, of the Romans or any other tricks that the Jews had of their sleeves. The, the problem though is that Tawafi doesn't only mean to, to kill, to, to, to take someone's life. In the Qur'an, there's no indication that, that it, it, it has this meaning. It is used in verses, like for instance it says, um, Allah yatawafqa al-anfusa hina mawtiha, wa allati lam tamat fi manamiha. That same word is used, Allah takes the soul of people when they die. Right, so when a, person's, when a person dies, Allah is the one who takes the soul from that person. And those people who don't die, He takes them in their sleep. Which indicates that when we sleep, we're, it's like a minor death. It's actually known as al asqa. Sleep is, is, is a kind of death, it's just a temporary death, where our soul is partially separated from our, our bodies. And that's why we start to see dreams and stuff like that, because we're, we're kind of separated from our physical self. And you know, sometimes dreams seem to last for hours and hours, and we've only slept for 10 minutes. Right? Because you're, you're separated from your phys- the physical limitations of things, and you can, your, your soul can do a lot of other things. So anyway, it's, it's a minor death. Allah's taking your soul, but He's going to return it at the end. One of the du'as for when you wake up is, is you praise Allah. Alhamdulillah, alladhi radda alayya ruhi ba'da it amatim. After he, he took my soul, I praise Allah because He returned it to me, so I can continue my life. Um, so this verse also indicates that, in Surah Al-Zumar, that Allah, he, Allah is the one who takes the soul when it dies, and for those people who don't die, who simply are sleeping, He takes it during their sleep. So here, the word tawafi is used for, for death, but it's not really indicating death, it says when the body dies, when, when, when you die, God is the one who comes and takes your soul. And there's a difference between dying and taking your soul. It's not one and the same thing, it's like there's one, one happens first and the second happens after. And similarly, he uses the same word tawafi to take for the soul when you're sleeping. You're not dying. Right? But he's, he's, he still uses the same word, I'm taking your soul when you sleep. <coughs> right? So what the, all, that, all that means is that this word mutawafika doesn't automatically indicate that Jesus is dead, that somehow God is taking his soul when he's dead. Right? Rather, when he wants to indicate death, he uses the word mot and imata, and, and mot means death actually. So he uses that in the Quran often to indicate death. <laughs> Right, so Tawafi by itself doesn't automatically indicate that he's dead. He can still be alive even despite that word. So he says, Oh Jesus, I shall take you from them. All it means is he's taking him. Now what happens to him, it's not so sure, we're not so sure about that yet. We'll see as, as we go through the verses. And, and I shall raise you up into my proximity. Again, the Arabic says, Rafiquka ilayya. Raf means to lift. Like, usually it means to physically lift something. If I lift this piece of paper, I'm doing rough of that paper. Now, it says, I'm lifting you up to me. Ilayya means to me. Now, if it's physical, if we're talking about a physical kind of lifting up of Jesus to, to God, what does that really mean? Like, where is God? God is not God. He's not, he's not limited by space, that He's somehow up there. And so Jesus has to go up. Like, his body actually has to lift up to get closer to God, get, become part of God. That's not, that's not, that's not the case. Allah is not, not in a physical place that we... That, that would, that would make any sense. Some people, um, some of the commentators, they say that this Rafi Ukhaydaya that I'm lifting you up indicates that I'm going to lift your, your station up. I'm going to kind of make you spiritually greater. Right? So I'm going to kind of um, build, build you spiritually until your, your station is high. Okay? By, by praising you, for instance, or by, by purifying your soul, by removing all the impurities, all the, all the, 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 the um, kind of negative qualities that you might have. By perfecting you totally. You are infallible, but you're, even an infallible person is still nothing compared to God. You're still full of imperfection compared to God. That's why the prophet even does this to the Quran. Even in this, a perfect person, the perfect man, he's a perfect human being, but he's not really perfect. God is the one who's really perfect. There's still an infin- infinity, infinity between the prophet's level and God's level. Okay, so, so somehow like, they, they say this verse indicates that he's going to perfect Jesus and lift his, his station up. The problem is that that doesn't fit well with this other verse that we have. Look at this, these two verses. At the very end, the last sentence it says, um, they, did, they do not have, even before that, they didn't um, kill him nor did they crucify him. Then the very end says, but they definitely did not kill him. Right? Whatever happened, they didn't kill him. Rather, God raised him into his proximity. 
Right? Here the same word is being used. He's raised him. Now here, if you, if you understand, um, understand to raise to mean he's perfected him or lifted him spiritually, this, this verse doesn't really have any meaning. The rather comes after this. They definitely did not kill him. Rather, rather God raised him to his proximity. The question is, the question that's being asked for which this verse is coming is, so what happened to Jesus? If they didn't kill him, if they didn't torture or crucify him, he's not here. We, he disappeared, so what, what happened to him? That's the question that's in our mind. What happened to him? This verse comes and says, God raised him to his proximity. Now, it doesn't make any sense to say, no, they didn't crucify him, they didn't kill him. Rather, God lifted him spiritually. It's not an answer for the question. We still wonder, what happened to Jesus? Where is he? This, this verse is trying to tell us where he is. That he, he's been lifted off. We don't know where, where he is, whether he's you know, in, in the clouds or, or somewhere else. We don't know exactly where he is. But in, in any case, he's not here. He's not physically here anymore. Is, is that clear? I still see some puzzle, puzzle looks on your faces. All I'm trying to show you is that lifting off, the lifting up of Jesus is not a spiritual upliftment only. Rather, what Allah is, is indicating here is that He's physically lifted off of earth, he, so He no longer exists only here. Right? Whether that means he's, he's dead and lifted off somewhere, or whether He's still alive, body and soul or somewhere, that's another, that's another issue that we'll have to look at. But in, in any case, He's disappeared from here and He's been lifted off of earth, physically. I told you today, today's um, first story. It's really a puzzle. And I, 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 should, I, should, I should kind of have a disclaimer as well. That I'm not 100% sure. Um, and it takes, one of my teachers said this. I told Jawadi Mahmoud in class once he said, he, he told us something very difficult. Um, and, and it's a class of 500 people in, in Poland. And he, he, he saw that we were all really confused. And so he said, I don't think that you're going to understand this um, the first time I say it. He says, like, so, this kind of a thing, it takes, it takes um, studying it 10 times. Um, reading about it ten times, doing a, doing a discussion with somebody ten times, and then teaching it ten times before you can understand it. And so he had, he had already done all that fifty times, and he was at the end of the fifty times, so it was clear, crystal clear for him. But he recognized that it was the first time we heard that, that particular idea, topic, so he, he told us this. So this is one of those things where um, you really have to go through it a, a bunch of times. I've heard, gone through it five times at least already, ten times already, just to, just to be able to understand it a little bit. So this is my first time teaching it. So hopefully <laughs> the, by the fifth time, So what we know so far is that, I'm gonna, that he's going to take him, but not necessarily kill him. So we don't know if he's dead or not. I shall raise you to my proximity. We know that he's physically lifted off. Again, we don't know whether he was lifted off and then killed, or, or lifted off and he's still alive. We don't know that yet either. And I shall free you of the filth of those who have not believed. Right? He's, he's, he's having to live this life on this, on this, on this, on this on the him with all these money strikers who don't believe in him, who are evil. Um, and so Allah is going to free him of all of that. So he doesn't have to live with that filth anymore. Okay, so he's going to do that. He's going to free him from all that. Then he says, <clears throat> And I shall make those who follow you dominate those who do not believe in you until the day of res resurrection. Right, this is another uh, challenging sentence to understand. Okay. The first thing that comes to mind is that he, maybe he's saying that he's going to make Christians, you know, the followers of Christ, the followers of Christ are going to be the disciples, true Christians, monotheistic Christians. They sometimes going to make them dominant. Right? They're going to dominate the rest of the people who don't believe in the world. But if that's what the verse means, then it never happened. Right? The verse was wrong, because it never happened. The, the monotheistic Christians were immediately subdued. They were immediately kind of, they had to go off into the corners of the earth, hide in caves, um, and, and, and practice their religious secretly. Because immediately, you know, Paul, Paul in Christian, Christianity took over, and the Trinity took over, and not immediately, but within, within a couple of centuries. Um, that, but the Trinity took over and, um, and that dominated. So false Christianity dominated, not the true Christianity, which was the, the teachings of Jesus Christ. So what is this 